Hey everybody, how's it going? Mr. Kalala here. We're going to quickly talk about the interior and exterior angles of a triangle. Um, there's a couple of things that you're going to need to remember, a few rules and a few definitions. Let's take a look. The first thing you need to know is that the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a triangle is always 180 degrees. Now I didn't give you a definition for what interior angle means because I would hope it's fairly obvious. Um, interior means on the inside of something. So every triangle has three interior angles. We have right here one, a second one here, and a third one right here. So it's just those three angles that make up the inside angles of the triangle. That would be our interior angle. So every single angle, uh, every single triangle rather, uh, always has those three equaling 180 degrees. Doesn't matter if it's a right triangle, an isosceles triangle, a scalene, a obtuse, an acute. It doesn't matter what kind of triangle it is. It's the interior angles will always, always, always equal 180 degrees. Now you could take my word for it, but let's uh, use some information that we know to quickly prove that. So here I have uh, the same triangle, and we've labeled the angles uh, angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3. Now, don't worry about what measures they are. We don't care how many degrees they are right now. That's not even necessary to prove this. What I do want you to think about is the parallel lines and transversals that we talked about last week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some parallel lines on the top and the bottom of that triangle. Um, and so now we have that. So basically what that ends up doing is it makes these sides of the triangle are now transversals because they are crossing parallel lines. We know some information about that. Don't forget that alternate interior angles are always congruent. Now remember, alternate interior means the angles on either sides of a transversal when we have parallel lines. So if angle 1 is right here, angle 1 has an alternate interior angle right up here. Now remember, congruent means equal. So uh, that means that I could call this angle 1 because it's the same exact measure. Now we can take it and look at angle 3, and that has an alternate interior angle right here. So we could label that one as angle 3. What I've just done is I've proven that the three angles right here that make up this straight line right here my, my writing's a little off, but you can should see that that's a straight line. Those three angles, angle 1, 2, and 3, make a straight line. So they have to be 180 degrees. So we have just proven that the three angles equal 180. That, again, will be true for any triangle. Okay? Uh, let's just uh, show you a couple of ways that you might have to kind of use that information. So here you have a uh, triangle where... Uh, two of the angles are already labeled for you, and you have a third angle that you're missing. Well, you know they have to be 180, so all you got to do is you got to say, well, all right, well, I've got 50 and 95. I know that together that's 145. And if I know that all three of them have to be 180, then I just find what's left. That's going to be 35 degrees. So now I know that this last angle has to be 35. So we can always find that missing angle um, if we're given the other two. Sometimes we might throw some algebra out at you. Um, this one obviously looks a little bit more complicated, but again, it, it relies on that simple fact that we know that the three interior angles equal 180 degrees. So I'm simply going to take my three angles and add them together, so angle plus angle plus angle, and say, hey, they got to equal 180. It just so happens that those angles all have some variables. So I'm just going to say 3x plus 28 plus 5x plus 52 plus 2x minus 10. And again, that equals 180. All I did was take the three angles. Um, I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. So 3x plus 5x plus 2x, that's going to be 10x. And then we have 
uh, plus 28, plus 52, and minus 10, that's going to end up being plus 70. So this all turns into 10x plus 70 equals 180. I know you guys can go ahead and solve it from that point forward. So you're going to have 10x equals 110. And ultimately, when we finish it off, we end up with x equals 11. That doesn't mean that there are 11 degrees, right? It just means x equals 11. Go ahead, plug 11 into each of those angles, and you could figure out what the measure of each of them are. And I, I guarantee you that if you plugged in 11 and then added up the number of degrees, you'd get 180 degrees. All right, so that's another way we might use that idea of interior angles to solve a problem. Let's talk about exterior angles. So an exterior angle of a triangle is an angle formed by a side and an extension of an adjacent side. That's your textbook definition. So here's a side right here of a triangle. And then the adjacent side, remember adjacent means next to, and we're extending it. Basically what it means is you're extending one side of a triangle and it makes an angle. So when we're talking about the exterior angle, we are talking about this angle right here. Okay, Exterior, you should know, means on the outside. Um, and so we just talked about the interior angles, now we're talking about the exterior angles. Okay, Let's get a little bit more into this and let's talk about uh, a relationship that there is. Uh, exterior angles have what's called remote interior angles. Now your, your textbook refers to them as remote interior. Other textbooks sometimes call them opposite interior. But uh, basically what we're talking about is the two non-adjacent interior angles of an exterior angle. So uh, if this is again our exterior angle, the two remote interior would be this angle here and this angle here. Okay. So they are the ones that are, again, uh, the non-adjacent interior angles. Okay. Now how is that helpful? That is helpful because there's a rule regarding remote interior angles. The rule is that the measure of an exterior angle is equal to the sum of its interior angles. And again, we can go ahead and prove that. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly label uh, again, uh, let's call it angle 1, 2, and 3. And I'm just going to call uh, the exterior angle, let's just call it X. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, all right, I know that angle 1 and angle X, they have to equal 180 degrees. And I know that because they're supplementary, because I see a straight line. So I know, again, let's just write it down, that angle 1 plus angle X equals 180. I also know, because angle 1 is an interior angle, that angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 equals 180. Well, Look what we have here. Those have to be the same thing because they're both being added to angle 1 and they're both equaling 180. So we can say that the two remote interior have to equal together the same amount that the exterior angle does. Okay. So again, we can put that into use. Here's another, here's an example. Uh, so we have here uh, uh, exterior angle labeled X. We have two remote interior angles right here and here labeled 63 degrees and 86 degrees. All you have to do is you have to say, okay, well, 63 plus 86, that equals 149. And I know that these two angles here are equal to my exterior angle, so therefore x has to be 149 degrees. That one's pretty simple. Um, as always, we can make it a little bit more difficult by incorporating some variables. You have another example right here, um, but again, we're just going to base it off of the same exact um, premise, the idea that the two remote interior angles, so uh, again, that's here 
and here, they have to equal the exterior. So I'm going to take basically those two angles, so angle plus angle, and I'm going to say, hey, it has to equal that 146, that's the exterior. So I'll just take those. The first remote interior is 5y plus 3. And the second remote interior is 4y plus 8. And again, I know that they equal 146 based off of our rule. I'll go ahead and solve this. I know you guys know how to do this. I'll just do it super quick. So 5y plus 4y is 9y. Plus 3 and plus 8 is plus 11. So 9y plus 11 equals 146. I'll subtract 11. It gives me 9y equals 135. Divide by 9. And you end up with y equals 15. Again, doesn't mean that those angles are 15 degrees. It means y equals 15. Deg 15. Plug the 15 from here right into these expressions and you'll figure out how many degrees each of those angles are. So again, you've got in, uh, interior angles of a triangle, you've got exterior angles, we've got remote interior angles. There's some relationships involved there. Refer back to this video if you uh, kind of need to recap them. You're going to try some questions on them. Good luck. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. All right. Bye, guys.